Hey everybody, welcome back. We are in Crown Point, Tobago, and we're here today to talk about carbice. I mentioned this yesterday in the video I did flying through the Virgin Islands in this airplane, the BN2 Islander, and somebody asked me about it in the comments. It's one of my favorite subjects, so I thought I'd talk to you guys about it today. Um, this airplane has what is uh, this airplane has a carb temp gauge. Now, carbureted engines are found in, in older airplanes like uh, the Piper Warrior, the Piper Arrow, um, any round gauge version of the 172, not the G1000 172, not the G1000 Bonanza or the Baron. Um, anything that's got round, you know, like a round, six, round gauge six pack probably has a carbureted engine. Um, your big hint is going to be if it's got a carb heat uh, lever, which this airplane has two of them right here, um, one for each engine. In airplanes like the Warrior, the 172, um, they tend to be on the lower right-hand part of the uh, instrument panel, and it'll be labeled carb heat, and it's usually a pull-out knob. It's usually you pull the knob out to engage the heat, and you push it in, um, to turn the heat off, the carb heat off. Now, we'll take a look. I think we'll we'll see if we can take a look at the 152 in a second so I can show you that. Uh, and I apologize in advance for, for the head tracker and the kind of the jerky movement of it. But um, so this airplane's got the carb temp gauge. Most airplanes don't. Um, and the the beauty of the carb temp gauge is it allows you to be a little bit more precise with your carb heat use. Now, you can see here uh, it's got the temperature range, and it's got a yellow range from about plus 5 Celsius to negative 15 Celsius. That's the area in which you're most likely to get carb ice in your uh, carburetor in the engine. Now, when I talk about setting power in any type of piston airplane you'll you'll hear me say this all the time in my videos and if you guys are interested in you know real world stuff like this um i talk about it all the time in the cruise cruise portions of my flight so if you're interested in this type of stuff watch my flights i talk about different you know navigation weather engine stuff all the time um when you set pressure in an airplane that's got the blue knobs with the variable pitch propeller, you're setting your power using the manifold pressure gauge. In an airplane like the 152, the Warrior, um, that do not have the blue lever, they're fixed pitch propeller airplanes, you're going to be setting your power on the RPM. This is going to say RPM, not manifold pressure. So um, when you're setting your power, I always stress this. Set your power precisely. Don't be sloppy with it. If you want to set it to 25 inches of manifold pressure, set it to exactly 25 inches of manifold pressure. Don't set it to 24 and a half or 20 or 25 and a half. Set it to 25. Um, the reason is the first indication of carb ice outside of having this gauge is a drop in manifold pressure or RPM on airplanes with a fixed pitch propeller now if you've got your power set precisely and you know it was at 25 and you look over and it's now at 24 and a half you know something's changed and you need to pay attention to it if you get a further drop let's say to 24 the first thing i would think about is the potential for carb ice of course we're talking again without having this gauge so what you would want to do in that case, um, if you've got that drop in manifold pressure, drop in RPM, is turn on your carb heat full. Now again, we're assuming you don't have this carb temp gauge. The reason you want to turn it on full is because, well, I'll explain that actually in a second. Um, it's going to make a little more, a little more sense in a second. If you've got the carb temp gauge, what you want to do, if, if these needles get down into the yellow region here, maybe set it to half, 50%, and see if that 
temperature goes up enough to get it out of that yellow range. If it doesn't, add a little more carb heat. You know, keep going until it gets out of that range. Now, the principle behind all of this is this right here. This is a Venturi. Now, this is Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli is known and beloved by student pilots everywhere because we have to discuss this on our private pilot check rides. Um, and Bernoulli was a Swiss, Swiss physicist. And what he discovered was that uh, air, when airflow is restricted, this amount of air, the same amount of air has to speed up to get through this restricted area here to get all of this volume of air through here, it has to speed up and go faster. When it speeds up, the pressure increases. And when the pressure increases, the uh, temperature decreases. Now, the other place you see a Venturi, this thing we were looking at here, see this, this narrowed area, is right here in your carburetor, okay? You've got air coming in through your carburetor, and then it comes into this pinched area, this restricted area. And so the temperature decreases, okay? In a Venturi, in a carburetor, the temperature can decrease by up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we're sitting here in the Caribbean. A perfectly reasonable question to ask is, what are we, what are we worried about ice for? That's why, because the temperature in your carburetor can decrease by up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit going through the venturi in your carburetor. So if it's night, so if it's hot and humid outside, let's say it's 90 degrees out and humid, when that air goes through your carburetor, it can drop by 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and you've got humidity, and that can cause ice, of course. Now, practically speaking, um, this is what you want to this is what you want to use now this i use religiously in the summer here in new york uh where we have hot and humid summers and this is a carb ice chart uh just google carb ice chart there's a thousand of them i'll put the link in the description uh, and what you do is you take your temperature your ambient air temperature and your dew point and you find out where they intersect and then you look over here and you see what kind of uh, risk you have for icing for carburetor icing now it can be 90 degrees out right and let's say it's it's you know 90 degrees and humid and you're up here in this range here and you can think you're you're totally fine this is in the blue area you look over here icing at glide and cruise power now what is glide power and what is cruise power cruise power is you know your cruise power setting 25 inches of manifold pressure 2500 rpm you know when you're cruising along at 120 knots in your in your warrior glide power is uh when you reduce power either to approach an airport or you're in the traffic pattern to land you know 1800 rpm 1700 rpm um those are glide power settings. So um, what you want to do is when you're flying in an area that's hot and humid, or anywhere for that matter, check the carb ice chart if you've got a carbureted, a carbureted engine. Like for example, let's say you're at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 degrees is your dew point. Right in here, this is your serious ice and cruise power range. It's something you really have to pay attention to. Um, and it's, it's something that, uh, you know, can, can really be an issue. Now, what is the problem if you get carb ice? If you get carb ice, uh, if it is bad enough to restrict airflow to the engine, uh, you can lose engine power completely. Okay. Um, and this, and this happens. It absolutely happens. There was, uh, there was an accident a couple of years ago that killed two people very near where I live. Uh, they were flying a Cessna 150 got carb ice in the, in the middle of the summer, got carb ice, uh, and they didn't handle it properly and they crashed and the, and the two, the two people died. Um, now let's say you're going along at, you know, whatever your airspeed is or whatever your power setting is. Um, carb heats off. You got your manifold pressure set to 25. It drops a little, you notice it. 
drops a little more and you think to yourself, okay, let me put on the carb heat. You put on the carb heat, what that does, it, it's initially going to decrease the RPM or the manifold pressure even further. And you have to be aware of that, right? So turning the carb heat on is going to decrease your power even further. If you have carb ice in the carb, as that ice is melted by the carb heat, it gets ingested through the carburetor into the engine. And, you know, it's just ice. It's just ice. It's not a big deal. Uh, but it makes noise. It gets crunchy. It gets, uh, you know, and, and your engine can kind of not backfire, but, you know, make some funny noises as the, as the ice is going through. That tends to make people pretty nervous. And so what, what the tendency people have is they'll get a little bit of carb ice, They'll put on the carb heat, the power drops even further, the ice starts to melt, starts to go through the engine, makes ugly noises, and then they're really nervous. And so because they seemingly cause this by turning the carb heat on, they'll turn the carb heat off because they, you know, they want this to stop. That's the biggest mistake you can make. If you turn the carb heat off too early, you can allow the the ice to reform beyond the carb heat intake in the carburetor in in which case you will not be able to melt that ice no matter what you do and then you're in real trouble so if you suspect carb ice and you turn your carburetor you turn your carb heat on the power drops you get some you know ugly engine sounds leave it on it's going to chew that ice through the engine then the power is going to return Okay, um, that's kind of the biggest mistake that people make, and that's the process for getting rid of it. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Be aware of that. Now, in the sim, uh, this is modeled. Check to see if you have the assistance options, failure and damage, icing effect on. If you've got this setting on, uh, Ice, when this setting is set to on, ice accretion will affect the airframe injection systems, carburetor, etc. Right? So, um, it is modeled in the in the sim. It's a real world thing, and it's uh, it's absolutely something you should be aware of. Um, again, I talk about this sort of stuff ad nauseum as I'm flying. I just kind of, um, you know, repeat these things as I as I'm doing my flights. Um, various aviation subjects whatever kind of strikes me at the moment so if you guys are interested in this sort of stuff um i would encourage you to watch the bodies of the of the full flight videos that i post i talk about you know all kinds of systems and weather and uh you know talk about instrument approaches and atc stuff um and i'm i'm perfectly happy to make these specific videos on it but i but i also would encourage you guys to watch those videos watch the the cruise portions of those videos where I talk about this sort of stuff all the time. If, uh, if anybody's interested more, or if you got any questions, you know, please let me know in the, in the comments. And, uh, if there's any other subjects you want me to talk about, be happy to do it. And I hope you guys are having a great day and we'll talk soon.